You're twice as sure with two great names, Frigidaire and General Motors. Frigidaire presents Herbert Marshall as the man called X. Wherever there is mystery, intrigue, romance, in all the strange and dangerous places of the world, there you will find the man called X. Now Frigidaire presents Herbert Marshall as Ken Thurston, the man called X. I'm very sorry, madam, but I've told you already. We do not have that information. I know, operator. I know what you told me. But can't you understand? I'm desperate. My very life's in danger. I'll connect you with the nearest precinct to the New York City police. I don't want the police. I want to talk to Mr. X. Please, operator. Please, if you'll only... I... I'm terribly sorry, but no one by that name lives here. He... You must have the wrong number. What? I beg your pardon. Quite all right. Goodbye. Coming. It's you. That's right. Were you expecting the man called X? I don't know what you mean. I I never heard of any such person. Yeah? I, I wasn't going to talk. Really, I wasn't. I only meant to... What are you going to do? Whatever you were going to do, baby, looks like you've had a change of plans. Hagen, for the last time, no. Now get out of here. Let me go back to sleep. Mr. X, it's, it's positively impossible that you should do this to me. Then call to the medical. I am doing it. Good night. You have no soul, no heart. No... Oh, all right. What do you need the money for? Well... Uh, it's all on account of Clara Bella. Uh, Mr. X, uh, she is gorgeous. The most luscious little damsel in New York. You'd love her. At the moment, I hate her. And she's so refined, you know, drinks nothing but champagne. That's how the bill got to be $68. She was brought her family. Oh. Uh-oh. If that's Clara Bella, tell her not to worry. Everything's all right. Oh, it is, isn't it? Hello, Ken Thurston. One moment, Mr. Thurston. Washington is calling. Uh, hello? I have your party, sir. Go ahead, please. Hello, Ken. Chief. Uh, sorry to get you up, Ken, but this is urgent. What is it, Chief? Well, uh, earlier tonight, some woman up in the country tried to place a phone call to Mr. X. Huh? The operator gave her the usual runaround, and after she'd uh, hung up, reported the number to the police. They went out on a routine check and found her dead, strangled. Uh-oh. Now, uh, I want you to get on it right away. Well, uh, when did the Bureau take on local murder cases? Oh, it's more than that, Ken. This thing is plenty big. I'm getting a plane out of here and flying up. Tell you all about it in the morning. Meanwhile, you can get the dope over to the 14th Precinct. Her name was Glorianne Milholland. All right, Chief. I'm on my way. But, Mr. Thurston, first I drive to the police station. Then I drive to the morgue. Then I drive 50 miles up here in these mountains. Maybe I've already earned those $47, huh? Now, uh, let's see. Three hours at a buck and a half an hour... Now, Pig, up to now, you've earned uh, four dollars in the house. Oh. And keep your eyes on the road. Oh, I'm to sleep even to see the road. And Clara Bell will most likely never speak to me again. Good. It'll be cheaper that way. Uh, what's money compared to the... Mr. X, you have a mercenary outlook. Pig, on for that, there's no answer. Slow down now. No, no, it should be right along here somewhere, according to the information the police dug up. What should be? Mr. Milholland's from a cabin. He's a divorced husband of the woman who was killed. Oh, there, there. Try that uh, driveway on the left. Mr. X, do you call that big house a cabin? On the settlement he got from his wife, he could build a dozen like this. Stop in front of that door. Okay, now let's go wake up the owner. I think he's already awake, Mr. Thurston. The lights are on. Yeah. Front door's open. Come on. Mr. X, look. In the driveway. Yeah, I see. But why would anybody do that? Well, you fit the description of Little Holland, all right. But but how did he get all those holes in him? I'd say by standing in front of a tuning gun. It'll do it every time. Well, 
that's the deal, Ken. That's what I meant by saying this thing was plenty big. All right, Chief. So the immigration authorities were getting ready to question the Milhollands, and somebody beat them to it. Why did they want to question them? Several months ago, Ray Milholland was flat broke. Then he suddenly took a trip to Lisbon. Married uh, Gloria Ann Jensik there a week later and brought her back to the United States. So? Two months afterwards, she had a divorce and gave Milholland a big sum in settlement. The immigration boys wanted to know how come. Oh, the old trick. Buying citizenship through a short-term marriage of convenience to a United States citizen. Right. She yeah. married the guy over there simply as a means of getting into this country as a citizen. But the question is... How did Gloria Ann Jensik get in touch with Mill Holland in the first place? And somebody didn't want him to answer that question, which is a pretty clear indication that there's no isolated case here. Somebody's collecting on these arrangements and sitting in a good spot for blackmail later. Sure, that's probably why Mrs. Mill Holland was trying to get in touch with you right before she was killed. This is a racket, all right, Chief. I'm inclined to go with you on that, Ken. Uh, especially in view of this letter we managed to intercept. Hmm? Let's have a look. Addressed to Mr. Harry Rowe in the USA. That's right. And written by a girl named Marguerite Heil in Lisbon, Portugal. How about Rowe? Has he been questioned? Yes, several days ago. And he seems to be clean. He's a farmer who, uh, he went bankrupt a while back. Says he's never heard of the woman. Mm-hmm. Heard of your bad luck and wish to help you. Have much money and would be glad to send you the fare to come to Lisbon and marry me. Mm-hmm. Well, it seems to be a pretty definite proposal of marriage by this girl to a man she's never met. Yeah, sounds like it. Marguerite Heil. She apparently didn't believe in leaving anything to Rose's imagination. Uh, here's the snapshot she enclosed. Well, all this and money, too. Hmm. What do you think, Ken? I think I'd better go to Lisbon. Absolutely the last straw that busted the camel, Mr. Thurston. You didn't even let me have time to say goodbye to Clara Bell. What's the difference, Pagan? She isn't speaking to you anyway. And now when I'm practically engaged, you want me to make love to some strange woman. <laughs> One who probably don't know how to talk good English, even. Mm, you got a point there. I will not be a philatelist. It wouldn't be fair to Clara Bell. It's, um, it's an awful quick 40 bucks. That's the only thing I like about it, but, uh, but I won't do it. Pagan, all you have to do is to pretend you're Harry Rowe. Meet this girl, string her along, try to find out who's behind the racket. <laughs> but you forgot one thing, Mr. X. This Harry Rose coming to Lisbon to marry the girl. Well, I wouldn't advise her to go that far. No. Absolutely, positively, and finally, no. Well, I guess I'll have to handle it myself. That's what I intended to do in the first place. I thought this might work out better. Oh, no doubt. You'll be doing a much better job than I could, Mr. Yeah, uh, I suppose so. Uh, I'm not looking forward to it. Hey. What's that? Well... Uh, Oh, there's a snapshot of Marguerite. Here, I'd like to see it. Well, I don't mind if I... Huh? This, this is her? This this is Marguerite? Yeah. Oh, I don't blame you for turning down the job. But, but, that is... Um, Mr. X, I, I have reconsidered the matter carefully, and I, and I can now see my duty without the slightest consideration for my own personal feelings. I shall do this job for you. Pagan, your nobility of spirit overwhelms me, and I'm quite sure Clarabella will be very understanding. Clarabella? Who's Clarabella? Mr. Thurston, can this plane go any faster? Americans are all so witty. Oh, thank you, Miss Harlitz. It's nothing, really. <laughs> One would almost think you were a diplomat instead of a farmer. A farmer? Uh, oh, oh yeah, yes. I felt so sad when I heard about you losing your farm. Hmm? Oh, oh yes, that, that was very bad. How did you come to lose it? Oh, well, it was just one of those things, you know, easy come, easy go. <laughs> you know how it is. Marguerite. Oh, oh, really, Mr. Rowe? I don't know if we should call each other by our first names yet. After all, we only met a few minutes ago. <laughs> but that makes no difference. Ever since I first saw your snapshot, I have felt I know everything about you. Huh? <sighs> Such beautiful little hand. And your wrist. And your arm. Uh, Mr. Rowe, please. Oh, oh I I'm sorry. What were you saying? About your farm. What did you raise on it? Oh, 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 mm, crops, mostly. Uh, different kinds, of course. Oh? Did you practice um, crop rotation? Marguerite, I know all about farming. I didn't need to practice. Oh, 
Me tell you I so clever. <laughs> <laughs> you think so? Well, uh, you won't mind if I uh, put my uh, arm... Oh, please. Uh, Mr. Rowe. Oh, in my country, a girl only permits such things after she's married. Oh, well, in that case, I'll be... Huh? <laughs> Let us hope, of course, that will be very soon. And then you will take me back to the United States. Won't you, Harry? Well, I tell you, it's like this. It's in the first time. Harry? Uh, Margaret. Won't you, Harry? Anyway. Come here, baby. No. No, I didn't mean. I really think you should leave now. It's getting late. But, but, don't you think we ought to get better acquainted? I mean, mean before we have married? Come on now. We'll have lots of time later. But your letter, it, it sounded like you were so, so friendly. I am, Harry. You wait and see. But I don't want to. Maybe I could at least kiss you goodnight. Mm. Every night, Harry, when we get to the United States. <laughs> Good night now. Uh. Clarabella never acted like that. <laughs> well, that's that. <laughs> no, not at me. Don't shoot! Why don't they have bigger trees in this park? Huh? Huh? Maybe that's all. Oh, somebody's coming. They're heading this way. They're, they're after me. I... I didn't know she was your girl, mister. I, I, I never ever saw before. You, you, you got me mixed up with somebody else. Please don't shoot me. Please, I was only to... Huh? It's you. Mr. Rex. <laughs> Continue with Frigidaire's Man Called X, starring Herbert Marshall. Ken Thurston has gone to Lisbon, Portugal, to investigate an international marriage racket. Pagan has been posing as a marriage-minded American named Harry Rowe. And a few minutes ago, left the home of Marguerite Heil, only to walk into a burst of gunfire from the dark shrubbery of the park. And Pagan is thrown completely off balance when he sees Mr. X himself carrying a smoking gun in his hand. Pagon, let's get this straight once and for all. I did not try to kill you. But your gun, those shots, zing, zing, bullets all around. Mr. Thurston. Pagon, somebody shot at you from the underbrush. I was standing across the street, and I fired at the gun flashes. And whoever it was got away into the park. Y you mean somebody else was here? Sure. But that's even worse. Who was it? I don't know. Maybe, maybe you've got a rival. Ha, ha, ha. And maybe she's got a husband. Mr. X, I resign. From what? From being Harry Rowe. Starting right now, I have again become pagan Zelchman. Well, keep your chin up. Maybe you'll outgrow it. For 40 bucks, I can't afford to be a clay pigeon. That's fair enough. Make it 100. I accept. Just call me Harry. But from now on, I only work in the daylight. Matter of fact, you don't have to work at it for about 15 minutes. Long enough to introduce me to Marguerite. Huh? Sure. I'm an old friend of yours you happen to bump into on the plane over. I'll handle it from there. <laughs> After all my groundwork, eh? You're getting a hundred bucks for it. But, Mr. X, she is definitely not your type. You know, Margaret is sweet uh, and shy and innocent. Oh, sure. Mixed up with a two-time killer and proposes to a man she's never seen. She's shy, all right. She probably has a very good explanation, if you could only find out. What did you find out, by the way? <laughs> I'm very glad you asked me that, because, you see... Well, in the first place, I mean, she said... Well, not anything. I see. Then the only helpful thing you've done is to get yourself shot at. Mr. Thurston. That shows that our killer has crossed the Atlantic. Probably here in Lisbon. You mean the same character that tried to shoot me is the one who killed those Millhollands? I think it's a fairly safe bet. And you're lucky he wasn't using his Tommy gun this time, Pagon. Remember how Ray Millholland looked? Mr. Rex, absolutely for the last time again, I resign. <laughs> don't quite understand it, Mr. Thurston. Why did Harry rush away so suddenly right after the two of you arrived here? 
Some appointment he remembered, wasn't that it? But after all, I'm engaged to Harry, you know. We're going to be married. So he tells me. Very sudden, wasn't it? Well, yes, in a way. Are you going to be on leave for long, Ken? Maybe a week. Why? Oh, no reason. I just wondered. I imagine you would be rather busy. I won't see much of you. Oh, now, a pair of sweethearts like you and Harry wouldn't want to be bothered by having an outsider around, would you? Well, I mean, you are such a good friend of Harry's, and I certainly wouldn't want to come between you. Forget it, Marguerite. I can understand a man's wife always comes first. Well, I suppose that's right. Of course, we're not married yet. You're as good as married, though. Sometime this week, so Harry tells me. Yes. Yes, that, that's right. I'll bet you can hardly wait. I don't know. Sometimes I... No, nothing. Marguerite, come in. Ken, what is it? You don't have the slightest desire to get married to Harry Rowe. No? Then what do you think I do want, Ken? <gasps> oh, you are a good guesser, Ken. All right, then, let's have it. What do you mean? When you feel this way, why are you going to marry him? I, I hadn't met you then. It's got to be a longer answer than that. Oh, all right. I didn't care anything about Harry Rowe. I'd never seen him before last night. But I wanted to get into the United States, and by marrying him, I could do it. And the fact that a deal of that kind is not too legal didn't bother you any, huh? How did you get in touch with Harry in the first place? The man gave me his name. What man? I don't know, Ken. I only knew him as Mr. Jones. What difference does it make? Plenty. How much did you pay him? Nothing. Oh, now, come on. Wait a minute. But I didn't, Ken. I, I, I did some work for him. What kind of work? I... No, I can't. Please don't make me tell... I don't know much about him, Ken, but I do know he's dangerous. I'll buy that one, all right. Well, if you want, you want. But this game's a whole lot rougher than you realize. You better think it over. Oh, wait, please. You don't have to leave now. I don't have to, Marguerite, but uh, maybe I ought to. Oh, I guess you have not seen it. It's been so sudden. But you've made a girl who thought her heart was made of stone fall in love. What did you say? I'm not ashamed of it. No saying it, Ken. I love you. That's what I thought you said. But, Mr. Thurston, it's impossible to understand it. For me, she was strictly a cold fish, but for you, I don't get it. Never mind, Pagan. The main thing is she didn't kick through with the list. And that's what's important. List? What list? The names of wealthy women she's introduced to this man who calls himself Jones. Not only the ones who are still here, but the 20 or so were already, already married and gone to the States. <laughs> Did she tell you who this Mr. Jones is? No, but Pagan, I'm expecting a visitor. As soon as he gets here, I'll tell you both who Mr. Jones is. But if Margaret didn't tell you... Then how did you find out? From the chief. He phoned about an hour ago in answer to that cable we sent him yesterday. That's something else I don't understand, Mr. Thurston. You told him to check all the passenger lists and planes from New York to Lisbon for the last six months. That's right. And to look for repeats of the name of anybody who flew over between the time of the murders in New York and the time you were shot at here. And he found somebody like that? Just one man with a lucky hunch. No wonder if that... Hello. Hello, Ken? Marguerite. I've decided to give you that list you want. Oh? Good for you. When? Tonight. I'll pick you up in my car. We'll drive somewhere. Will around nine be all right? Perfect. All right, Ken. Until nine, then. Au revoir. Bye, Marguerite. That's it. The one break we need. <laughs> my fiancé and she calls you up. Now, Pagan, you've still got Clarabella. How do I know if I have or not? Anyway... Who is there? Well, I don't know. Mr. Jones, maybe? Let's hope not. Come in. Good afternoon. You are Senor Thurston, no? That's right. And you? Lieutenant Moreno, Special Division Lisbon Bureau of oh. Police. At your service. Come in, Lieutenant. And this is uh, Mr. Zellerschmidt. How do you do, Senor? Well, I was told you would give me the name of a man, Senor. That's right. He's wanted for two murders in the States, possible blackmail and conspiracy against the government. I don't know his Lisbon address, but you'll probably have it in your files. And his name, senor, is... Mr. Olan Lee. Never heard of him. Olan L-E-E. -E. L-E-A. L-E-A. Olan Lee. We shall apprehend him at once. Are there uh, accomplices? Only one that I know of. And the name? No, Lieutenant. I think I'd better handle that one myself. Matter of fact, my investigation of the accomplice won't be completed until tonight.
Where are we going, Marguerite? I thought we'd park here by the water, Ken. The highway leads down the coast to Lira. You... You don't mind if we stop? Mind? I was about to suggest it. Ah. Oh. The ocean is beautiful, isn't it? It's a nice background. For a lovely girl. Thank you, Ken. Nights like this when the moon is full, it shines off the water. You get to believing that everything in the whole world is beautiful. It's too bad it isn't. You look at the moon and you think, maybe it could be beautiful after all. Here's the list, Ken. Oh, thanks. This is it, then. The names of women who try to buy the one thing Uncle Sam never sells. Citizenship. Why did you do it? Because I wanted to go to the States, and I didn't have any money. Mr. Jones promised he'd get me there if I'd bring these women to him. I met a lot of them here in the Biarritz. I taught them English. I was a fool. But I didn't know about the blackmail, Ken, nor about the murder. Maybe you didn't at that. Oh, you've got to believe that at least. I didn't know. Maybe I'm a fool, too, Marguerite. I believe you. Oh, why didn't I know you before? You know, for one of the few times in my life, I can say that, too. What is it? I don't know. It's coming from the trunk of this car. Stay back, Marguerite. I'll take a look. All right, come out with your hands up. Hello, Mr. Thurston. Oh, Pagan. Ah, it was getting very uncomfortable, that What time. the devil were you doing in there, anyway? Oh, I just came along for a briefing. You know, technique, Clarabelle. You follow me, Mr. Thurston? I follow you, Pagan. But why do you call him Pagan, Ken? It's Harry Raw. I'll tell you all about it later, Marguerite. Wait. When did that car pull up in the shadows over there? I don't know. I didn't... Let me answer that. Five minutes ago. Now, don't move, Thurston. You know what a Tommy gun can do. Mr. Dunn. Well, good evening, Mr. Lee. Lee? So the police haven't picked you up yet. No. And thanks for the tip. I'll stay away from my apartment. I didn't know he'd followed Ken. I didn't tell him anything. Believe me, I didn't. So it's Ken, is it? I see why you shot out your mouth, Marguerite. Give him the list, Ken. I thought he was. Don't bother, Thurston. I'll take it from you later. All right, Lee. But one thing... Let's leave Marguerite out of it. That's up to her. I still got plenty of use for her. Well, how about it, baby? You gonna go with Thurston or stay with me? Ken, he's going to kill us. Me, not us. Play it safe, Marguerite. Well? I don't want to die, Ken. I'm not asking you. No. No, Ken. <laughs> you'd never ask anything of any woman. And you'd never give anything. Just the same, it's all a woman could ever want. It's all I'd have ever wanted, Ken. I don't have any choice. Well, you win, Mr. Jones. Hey, it's plain and smart, baby. You got the right idea. Sure, I'm a smart kid, all right. Goodbye, kid. I've got to take him, kid. Let's go the gun. All right. <laughs> now you, Thurston. Why, you... <laughs> you dirty, rotten dog. Mr. Eggs. How is she? Oh, she's pretty bad, Peg. I'm still unconscious. Get a doctor out here right away. Okay, Mr. Thurston. Hang on, Marguerite. Just keep hanging on. Okay. Okay. Don't try to talk, Danny. Everything's going to be all right. No, Ken. I've got to talk. I... Shh. It... It wouldn't have worked anyway. Ken. Oh, I mean... I guess I knew that all along. No, I don't. But, but it would have been so beautiful. I... The doctor's coming right now, Mr. Thurston. Is she? I mean, she's. Yes, pretty good. Hmm. What will we do, Mr. X? I don't know. I guess I better call the chief. She. she saved our lives. Yes. Mr. Thurston, you. you liked her very much, maybe. I don't know, Pagan. What difference does it make now? The world's rid of old Anna Lee, and the world's lost Marguerite. Maybe that's the way it has to be for some reason. 
Oh, what the heck? The only thing we can do, I guess, is to send a cable. Investigation successful. Mission completed. Case closed. And our Frigidaire star, Herbert Marshall. Next Thursday is the second anniversary of VJ Day, so we're giving up our time for a special program. But we'll be back in our regular spot on Thursday the 21st, two weeks from tonight. And of course, that includes my pal Leon Belasco with Dagon Zellschmidt. And don't forget, two weeks from tonight, when next I return, as the man called X. Good night. Richard Ayer's Man Called X is directed by Jack Johnstone with music composed and conducted by Johnny Green. Tonight's story was written by Maurice Zim and Les Crutchfield. And so until next week, same time, same station, this is Wendell Niles speaking for Frigid Air, made only by General Motors. All characters and incidents used are fictitious. Any resemblance to actual persons or incidents is purely coincidental. Remember, not next week, but a week from Thursday, we'll be back with Mr. X. And every Thursday, for the best in entertainment, tune in and stay tuned in to CBS, the biggest show in town. CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting Company. <laughs>